beautiful woman is sharing her spiritual adventure and getting rave reviews. Reba Riley experienced 30 different religions before she turned 30 years old, and she turned her journey into a book called Post Traumatic Church Syndrome. Reba is our guest this morning. So nice to meet you. I'm so glad to be here, Sheila. So congratulations on the success of the book. Thank you so much. Okay, so first you have to tell me about the title. What is post-traumatic church syndrome? Okay, so post-traumatic <laughs> church syndrome usually gets a laugh from a crowd. Right. <laughs> um, but you know, for, in some cases it's really not funny because uh, while it's the title of my book, what it also is is a way to acknowledge that spiritual injuries are real mm -hmm. and it's a way to be able to begin to talk about that. So when I talk about post-traumatic church syndrome, what I mean is a spiritual injury. Okay, so you started out on this spiritual journey, I guess when you were suffering from a chronic illness, right? I was, yeah. I was suffering from a chronic illness for most of my 20s, um, not able to be diagnosed, and uh, it was that illness that forced me, as it does for many people, to examine my spirituality. Mm -hmm. And did you question God when you were having that I think it would be hard not life? to. Yeah. I think it would be hard not to. That is not what made me leave the faith of my childhood, not my illness, but I did question, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I think a lot of people would tell you they, they have questions as they move into adulthood right. about religion and spirituality, but you decided to actually try out 30 different religions in a year, right? I did, yes. How, how does one go about that? Uh, you stumble, if you're me. <laughs> <laughs> you stumble through it. You know, the 30 Religions journey was really a way for me to put my hands around this really difficult problem of spiritual injury. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't a, you know, a prescription as much as it was just a, a way to have a ladder. It was a way to, you know, have some steps to handle it. And so I thought, if I just show up to this next religion, um, maybe I'll be able to find spiritual healing. Were you always accepted into these religions? No, not no. always. Yeah, not always. do you have like a really, like a horror story that happened? Or? You know, by and large, everyone was very accepting. Yeah. More so than you would even think. Okay, good. Um, but most of the time it was my fault because I didn't know what I was doing and so I would make all these <laughs> mistakes. Like I, when I went into the mosque, I accidentally fell into the, the trough of water where like I fell backwards and so I ended up Is in that the, a bad thing? I'm I don't guessing. think you're supposed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I read that you were interrogated about your sex life by, by Amish, Amish grandmothers. grandmothers? Yes. Okay, you have to tell me about that. Well, <laughs> after they got, I was the first English person, as they would say, right. um, to visit their church service. They actually let me come, and they were so gracious to mm -hmm. do that. But um, after they got over the strangeness of me, they wanted to know everything about my life. Really? Um, including this very delicately phrased question, did you live with your husband before you got married. <laughs> <laughs> so we had quite a laugh about that. Wow, you sucked mud in a sweat lodge. I did, yes. Where was this? This was in Columbus. And you know, it's worth noting, uh, Sheila, that all of these religions were within two hours of Columbus, Ohio. Really? So I didn't travel. I was too sick to travel. It seems like you would have traveled around the world you like the book Eat, Pray, Love. Yeah, well, Elizabeth <laughs> right. is a hero of mine and endorsed the book. But um, you know, a big thing about this story is that you don't have to travel to India. Every journey begins and ends exactly where you are and um, and so I think that's a big lesson we mentioned Elizabeth Gilbert yes. the author of eat pray love yeah. I mean everybody knows that book right and she actually said you could be the gutsy little wise little sister the to gutsy her wise funny little sister <laughs> I definitely fell down in, in you know just uh, amazement uh, when she said that and you know she she said that this book is for seekers of all paths mm -hmm. and that really is the truth so you, you said that you uh, when you were researching the book, you did that in Columbus. Yes. You're here in Cincinnati I now. Am. How long have you lived here? Two years. Two years. And Cincinnati Refined has this great story on the website about your house yeah. on Prospect Hill. Right. How, mu how much does your house uh, and your surrounding pay into uh, play into your healing? Well, you know, um, as far as the writing of the book, most of it occurred in, in my house here on Prospect Hill. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, this house that we live in is it's this, it's this beautiful place that we almost magically got into because of some crazy circumstances. And I heard um, you wrote a letter. I and did. That was I what, ran that, my way into my house. Yeah, how did you do that? Because we're always hearing about these contests where people write letters to yeah. buy a house for $200 or something. How'd you? Well, the house that we moved into had nine offers on it when we, uh, when we looked at it. And I just... I mean, I love this house so much, and I knew that it was a work of art for the, mm -hmm. the owners who had renovated it, and I wanted them to know that we would take care of it. And so I wrote this really heartfelt letter to them and said, you know, we'll love your house, we'll take care of it, we're stewards of this house. You might have had an unfair advantage being an author, but 
<laughs> Reva, thank you so much for talking to thank us. You. I'm sorry we don't have more time. But the book is called Post Traumatic Church Syndrome. Certainly wish you much, much success, and I hope you'll come back sometime. Absolutely. Reva. Thank right, you, thank Sheila. Thank you.